Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome uh, to the June Planning Economic Development and Housing Committee. Um, you can uh, view uh, the committee meeting on uh, Hartford Public Access Television Station um, on channel 96 on Comcast and on channel 602 on Frontier. Um, this evening, we have several items on the agenda. Uh, our committee members, uh, first of all, I'm Shirley Surgeon, I'm the Chair of Planet Equipment Development uh, Committee. We have uh, Councilman Sanchez, um, we have Councilman Marilyn Rossetti. Uh, let's see, we're members of the committee. Let's see who else is here. I, am I missing anyone? I think I've seen. I okay. thought I saw Councilwoman B um, Bermudez here. I, I was looking through the attendees. It's quite a few. Yeah, it's quite a few. Uh, we have attorney uh, Velasco from our Corporation Council's office. Uh, we have several guests. Um, we have our uh, in attendance. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, who else do we have? Attending, we have Aaron Howard uh, from the Department of Development Services. Uh, who else do we have on here? Um, scrolling to see, we have our Deputy Development Service Director, Randall Davis. Uh, okay, I believe those are the most. Those are the people we want to highlight. And uh, who else? is, uh, oh, Amy Chambers is also the uh, Chambers who is the planning and zoning uh, director. Sorry, Amy, I didn't see your name on the list of attendees as I scroll through. So welcome everybody to again to the um, June 2nd Planning Economic Development uh, Committee. Uh, again, we have been attendance for the committee members. Uh, we have Councilman Sanchez and Councilman Marilyn Rossetti, uh, and there's other members um, who will join us uh, as we get started. We have several items on the agenda this evening. Uh, don't believe, Jimmy, that we have, Councilman Sanchez, that we have a quorum. Uh, we only have uh, three person. I think we do need uh, an additional council person with myself to have a quorum. Uh, council President Rosado will not be with us this evening. So we're gonna take the items out of order um, until we get a quorum that we can um, uh, uh, take up any items because we do not have a quorum. So, so we, we have, have we, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Chair, okay. we, uh, Councilman Gail just joined us, he's a member. Oh, thank you. Then we have a quorum. Welcome, Councilman Gale. Yes. Glad to be here. Thank My you. My apologies for being late. Oh, you're outside. I am. Oh, beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, so we have a quorum. Uh, and if any other council person joins us, I will um, welcome them and let them know that they are uh, present for the meeting. So we have several items on the agenda, uh, also a presentation. We're going to take the agenda um, committee members out of order uh, due to the fact that one of our council person has to leave a little bit early. So if you will indulge me, if you don't mind, I would appreciate it. Um, the first item we will take out of the agenda will be item number three. Uh, yeah. I'd like um, to make item a motion. Well, let me read the item and then you can make okay. your motion. Um, the uh, mayor, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the, it's a resolution from um, Mayor Bronin uh, authorizing the transfer of 11 city owned properties to the Hartford Land Bank as part of the Lot Next Door program. It was item five on the May 24th, 2021 agenda. There will be a hearing uh, date on June 21st, 2021. Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we postpone this item due to the fact that we still have that hearing date to, uh, to go by. Do we have a second? 
I'll second the motion. Uh, thank you, Councilman Rossetti. Um, we the oh. motion has been properly um, second. Um, how yeah. do we vote on this to postpone this item um, because of the hearing date um, for June 21st? And we'll take it up at our next council uh, committee. Uh, council, Councilwoman Surgeon? Yes, ma'am. I believe Aaron Howard's trying to say something. I oh, do. I'm Aaron? so sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Go I'm right so ahead. sorry. Um, I totally understand if it needs to get tabled for tonight, but I think there's one thing at a request. Um, I don't believe council referred this item to planning and zoning for an 8-24 referral. Would it be possible to do that through committee now um, so that we can at least get the planning and zoning process going as well? All right. So could you tell us what's a, what is an 8-24 referral? Um, anytime there's a sale, and I will let Amy jump in, but anytime there's a sale or lease a city-owned property, um, we have to refer to planning and zoning under state statute. Uh, it requires us to go before planning and zoning commission to get a referral back to council um, for any of those transactions. Okay, so basically what you're asking us to do is make a motion to send this item to the planning and zoning commission? Yep, as a referral, yep. As a referral, okay. And then you guys will get back to us in, in time for the July um, comes uh, PDNH committee meeting. So I would like uh, through you, Chair. Sure. I would like to withdraw my motion and make a motion to send it to the planning committee. Uh, planning and zoning uh, commission I mean, referral to referral. the planning and zoning commission. So you can do two motions together in one, uh, in conjunction postponing the item. Also um, refer the item to the planning and zoning commission. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Councilman Rossetti. Um, the item is um, properly motioned and second. Uh, so how do we vote on this? Can I, can I just ask a question, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I understand uh, that we have a public hearing on it. I, I, I guess I'm not real clear as to why we need to postpone hearing about it uh, uh, or we want to take and let me address my question to sure. the maker of the motion I would miss sure. it that you you don't want to take action until you've heard what the public has to say about transferring these 11 properties to the land bank is that the idea correct but basically is 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 more because of the hearing and we can't make any um and we can't vote on this um at council because of, of the hearing date being June 21st. So if we were to vote on it, it would have to go to council after a positive vote, right? Well, yeah, but next council, council can't vote on it until after the hearing. Uh, so in, may I jump in here, Councilman Gale? Yep. Okay. So, um, Transferring of land, um, you know, the council would love to hear, or the committee would, I would like to hear uh, from the residents if they have any concerns, issues, um, you know, taking it up at the next committee meeting. Uh, if the, um, also, don't forget, we have to also refer this to the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission uh, for their uh, review of this also. So putting those two things onto the next committee meeting, uh, July, I'm not sure, in the beginning of July, when is our next committee meeting, uh, I'm not sure if there is a rush on this from the land bank. I'm not sure if there's anyone here at the committee meeting from the land bank. Um, good, uh, Councilwoman Sturgeon, uh, we did actually have, I'm not sure if Carrie Shea stayed on when she, um, but Carrie Shea was on this call. And we also have the chair of the land bank, um, Melvin Colon here on the call as well. Mr. Colon, are you here? Oh, and Carrie is here. I see Carrie. Right Sorry about that, Carrie. You do uh, have a representation from the land. Oh, bank. great. Okay. Thank you guys so very much. Um, is there a rush in getting these properties this month or can it wait until our uh, PDNH committee meeting and the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, meeting uh, this month and get this to you uh, at the beginning of July? I'll well, I'll certainly defer to Melvin. Um, I'm in a rush to do everything all the time. So um, 
Um, but Melvin is the chair and I'm the outgoing executive director. Um, so it would really be him and the new executive director who would have to carry the, the load in, in July. Um, Melvin? Sure, thank you, Carrie. And, and uh, thank you uh, uh, to the members of the, of the city council and, and especially you, Ms. Surgeon. Um, I am uh, inclined to, to the process. Um, we're also in the, in the process of hiring an executive director. And so um, unless Erin uh, or Carrie think that there's a compelling reason to uh, move this along, I, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go along with the, uh, with the postponement. But Erin, is there a reason for this to move ahead today? Um, no, I mean, they're, they have a really good point. They can't, even if they were to hear this tonight, they can't actually refer it back to council for a vote until the public hearing and the 8-24. So waiting until July um, provides that opportunity. Um, it wouldn't have been able to get approved until probably the second meeting in July uh, for we, council anyways. We only have one meeting July. Um, so that would be, I oh. believe around July 12th. And this committee's meeting will be July 7th. Exactly. Uh, yes. So we have time to approve this uh, if we see fit to do so before the uh, July 12th council meeting. Excellent. In that case, since we are, and hopefully we'll have a new executive director by then. And by the way, I should take this opportunity to say that Carrie Shea, as interim director of the Land Bank, has done an outstanding job. And we're very sorry to see her go at her own election, but by then we may have a land bank director. And so I, um, I'll, I'll clap too, actually. Um, and thank uh, you. So I understand the timing uh, and we'll, we'll go along with that. Sure. Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Colon. And Ms. Shea, thank you so very much for giving us of your time uh, when we need so and filling in um, on behalf of the residents of the city. Thank you. And uh, we, we really, uh, your knowledge base um, is, was incredible uh, and keeping the land bank going until they have hired a new director. So again, on behalf of the residents, thank you very much uh, for all that you've done for us. Thank you very much. It's a, okay. it's a great organization and a great city. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Uh, is there any more discussion? Hearing no more discussion, can I have a vote on the motion to postpone this item to the next committee meeting? Also, uh, refer the item to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Aye. 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 Great. Uh, the item is passed. We will be postponing this and referring this. Uh, thank you. Okay, next on the item, we will take up um, item number two. Um, Again, because um, one of our council members have to leave um, for a uh, very important um, function. Uh, item number two on the agenda is um, a resolution um, from Mayor Bonin accompanying a resolution authorizing the acceptance of $600,000 from the State of Connecticut Department of Economic and Economic Development, DUCD, for the construction of North Main Streetscape. The funds are from the State Bond Commission and are being administered through an Urban Act grant. And that item was item seven on the April 26, 2021 20, uh, agenda. Is there any discussion um, from the administration on this item? Um, good evening, council members. Uh, Amy Chambers, Director of Planning. Um, I am here representing the item. Um, uh, as you know, we are working now on the design of the North Main Streetscape. These funds were identified um, through the Bond Commission process. Um, and uh, while we still have a, a substantial gap um, in funding, we um, do need to accept the funds from DECD. Um, and so if there are questions either about the project or about um, the funding itself, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions from the members of the committee? Councilman Sanchez. Good evening. Uh, so just a, a curious question is that 
if I remember right, approximately five years ago, we started a uh, streetscape project in the north end of uh, Main Street. Is this the continuance of that project? Uh, it is the continuance of the project. Um, the project was stalled uh, due to um, funding issues. It was uh, restarted. We signed a contract earlier in 2020 um, to restart the design. Um, we, in the month of late in April, we did a public meeting um, where we reviewed the revised concept. Um, the consultant VHB is now working on um, engineering uh, the drawings. So um, they have provided a, a rough estimate for the cost of the project, um, but that will continue to be refined as the, the project moves along. And, and just one, one more question through you, Chair. Uh, what's, what's the length of this project from what street to what street? Absolutely. Um, this project, uh, the, the limits have actually been um, extended a little bit uh, due to community feedback. Um, so the project uh, relating to the DECD funds are from Earl to the Windsor Town Line um, and including a little tale of Windsor, uh, excuse me, of Windsor Street um, from Boyce Barlow back to Maine. Um, through feedback from the community, there has been a request for it to be extended down uh, past the entrance to Parker Memorial. So the project will now start at Westland Street. Thank you so much for that. That's uh, pretty impressive. That's quite a bit. So looking forward to that. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? I do also have to acknowledge our uh, Director of Development Service, Mr. Matthews, is at the committee meeting, and also uh, Councilman LeBron has also joined us. Any other questions? Hearing none, can I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to send this to Council favorably. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, um, can we all vote on this with a yay? Yay. Yay. Go. Good job. Thank you all. So the items will be sent back to the, for the next council meeting with a favorable, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a favorable representation for passing. This additional item on the other item on the agenda is the um, an item um, that was in, has been in committee since February 22nd. It's um, a resolution from um, Mayor Bronin uh, adopting the city of Hartford complete streetscape. This plan will complement the, the bicycle plan. Together, these documents provide a guide for transforming our city streets. This plan reflects approximately a year of effort by members of the Complete Streets Task Force, uh, led by City Bike and Pedestrian Coordinator, uh, Ms. Sandy Fry. This plan has been unanimously uh, endorsed by the Planning and Zoning Commission for the City of Hartford. I believe when this item uh, came on our agenda in February, there were some issues regarding um, the bicycle um, at bicycle where bicycles are going to be able to be rode and also getting this information out into the community uh, and um, hearing e exactly what the community have to say. Um, the oh, development oh. service department had sent over a uh, memo from uh, Ms. Fry uh, telling us all the uh, committee meetings that she's gone to, all the presentations and feedback from different uh, committees um, throughout the city. Um, Ms. Fry, are you on? Uh, Ms. Amy, are you here? Are we gonna, can you talk about this issue, please? Um, I'll actually let Sandy introduce the issue. I'm here to support if there are any additional questions. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, since we met with you back in early March at the committee meeting, um, we took to heart your concern about a public outreach for the plan. And the first thing we did was we set up a meeting for April 22nd for a public outreach meeting um, 
that was held in the evening, held via Zoom. And then we did everything we could to promote that meeting, let people know about it. And the flyer for the meeting also included a um, survey link where people could let us know that they were interested in serving on the committee, but they couldn't make the noontime committee meetings. Um, so we've got some feedback on that. We haven't fully summarized that yet to see if there's a standout time that we could, we could meet. Um, we went to all the NRZ meetings with a brief presentation to talk about the Complete Streets Plan uh, we let them know about the meeting coming up. We shared the flyer, asked them to distribute it to their members, which was done. Um, I attended uh, a PRAC meeting to discuss the plan and PRAC endorsed it. Um, the Tree Commission sent us their recommendations for the plan. And we used Facebook pretty extensively. We asked people in our network to share information about the plan. We actually did some paid advertising that went to more than 2,000 people. And we ended up having 52 people in attendance at the public meeting. Um, and I, I recorded in that memo to you the kind of comments that we got. Um, I think what we did that really was helpful, and maybe I should have done this back in March with uh, PEDH, is we tried to put a comprehensive presentation together that really explained what complete streets are and what they mean to a community and what kind of things you see in a community that has complete streets versus one that doesn't have complete streets. And I think that was helpful for people to understand the context of the plan. We then, um, we took the comments, we were able to take all the tree commission comments and incorporate them into the plan. They wanted to make sure that our plan was supportive of the tree plan that's been developed, that they work together well. Um, we had some questions. There was a question about um, when you do streetscape projects, you need to consider large trucks. And that's really covered in, in the complete streets plan because it talks about context. We don't have a single solution for complete streets that we apply everywhere. We made some changes in um, the traffic signal section, what we, uh, what we were calling for there. Um, and we also, we, we now have a practice um, of whenever we go to install bike lanes, we will notify the adjacent property owners, all the abutters of what's being done. So people are informed and they can let us know if they have any concerns. Um, we, one of the good recommendations we got was a recommendation that um, the city use speed monitoring signs more than we do. The, the sign that lets people know what their speed is, it can be attached to a speed limit sign. So we have a recommendation for that added. So, um, I'm hopeful that, that you will um, see that we did outreach. We really, and when we had the public meeting and all the emails that we sent, we said, if you have a small group that wants to hear about this plan, we would love to come and talk with you. We didn't have anyone take us up on that, um, but we did have, it was really a nice show of interest that we got at the public meeting. And I think we satisfied all the questions that were asked there. Uh, Ms. Fry, let me commend you uh, personally that you took to heart um, the council recommendation for going back out in the, com in the community. And from the feedback I received from the NRZ, um, they were very appreciative that the city came to them and asked them what their thoughts are on the bike plan. So I want to personally thank you for doing this. Um, and, um, you know, Basically, uh, for me back in February, the only issues I had was making sure that, um, you know, that all the community know what um, the city plans to do and, uh, you know, and agreed and given a recommendation that that may affect their community. So, again, I personally want to thank you for, um, you know, listening to the council, listening to us and actually uh, going out and speaking with the community. So thank you again very much for doing so. Any questions or comments? I have two, uh, two questions and, and a comment. 
I appreciate the extra effort uh, for the outreach, um, both uh, you, Sandy, and, and Amy, and, and the team. Um, it's important to me that uh, when we are going to affect a community or a neighborhood, um, that folks understand what the outcome may be after placing a bike lane. So my first question is that when you communicated with the folks and they asked the questions, are they aware that once this bike lane is installed, that they cannot park? And if they do, the the, the effects of, of what will be received of a $75 ticket, was that explained to them? Was that ever we, asked? We, we didn't get into specifics in discussing the complete streets plan because it's really not talking about specific bike lanes and even our bike plan, it shows lines on a map. And then when we get down to, oh, we have a repaving project here, let's look to see if we can provide uh, bike lanes. What we are doing now going forward, whenever we go to install bike lanes, if it changes the layout of a street in terms of changing parking, or changing travel lanes. We will notify the abutting property owners that that is happening. Um, so this summer, uh, we will be uh, hoping to use a, a state grant to mark a lot of bike lanes in the city. And as those designs are developed, we will develop a letter that will be sent to all abutters to inform them of that. So when you notify the abutting property owners, if they protest on having it, what's the procedure on that? I'm going to let Amy jump in on that because I think that goes a little bit beyond me as to how the city makes decisions in that regard. Sure. Um, I think Councilman Sanchez, it would depend on the scope of the project, um, you know, depend on the, the scope of the project and the timeline of the project to some degree. Um, but I do think that, you know, if there are individuals that have, you know, objection that perhaps their the staff can start by at least having a conversation with those individuals to understand exactly what what the objection is, because sometimes there are ways for us to solve some of those concerns that don't necessarily mean changing the, the scope of the project. I think if we find that there is a great deal of pushback, you know, with regard to a particular design impacting abutting property owners, then you know, we need to go back and have a conversation about how we you know, can, can modify what the plans are in order to uh, be responsive to that. Um, but I think, again, it would just depend on the, uh, the amount of response and the scope of the project. And we kind of need to approach those on a, a, a one by one basis. Um, I will say that I think that you know, providing the opportunity for um, comment by, by uh, residents um, by way of th these notices is an, certainly an improvement. Um, and I think that, you know, the responsibility is on us to make sure that we time that appropriately so that people have the opportunity to respond. Um, but I, yeah, I think that I can stop there. Okay. So I, I, I guess my concern is that if I support this, and let's say, uh, for example, just example, uh, Hillside Avenue receives a uh, park lane. Um, in Hillside Avenue, everyone parks on the street on both sides. But let's say it was decided that uh, you guys put in a park lane. Now I start receiving all kinds of complaints. Is there a process to reverse that? Is there a process to amend this uh, bike ordinance? Well, I, I think, can reassure, oh, go ahead, Amy. Yeah, thanks. I, I think what's important to note here, um, in particular with regard to the request that's before you today, is that the Complete Streets Plan isn't necessarily about the implementation of bike lanes. There's already a bike master plan that exists within the city, and the Complete Streets Plan is really meant to address how we look at the cross section of the road, but also how we treat the sidewalks and really any area that, you know, within the public right of way that impacts pedestrians, bicyclists, vehicle, users of vehicles, public transportation, et cetera. 
So what the plan actually does is provide um, more guidance to uh, DPW, for example, as the implementing party about um, the priorities that exist in terms of design. But this particular request before you isn't, it's not about implementing any bike lane. It's not about doing that because there's already that, that, that exists separate from this. I will say just with regard to, you know, your concern about feedback that, you know, I think that this has been an iterative process for us. And certainly, you know, there's more that we can do by way of kind of formalizing what that feedback loop looks like. But I would, you know, in any one of those notifications, there would be contact information. Um, and, you know, myself and the rest of my team try to make ourselves as available as possible, you know, to members of the public when there are concerns. Um, and I think that, again, we just have to be able to kind of address those concerns um, as they come to us because they may vary and there may be, you know, either misunderstanding and in information or, you know, other ways for us to solve some of the concerns that, that are presented to us. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that explanation because it truly, it, it does help me understand better now uh, what this is all about. But just keep in mind that, you know, $75 is the, um, is what the cap is right now for a customer to a business that will park on a bike lane versus $45 when you're parking and the meter runs out. So I think it's, uh, it's extreme. Um, and I just want to avoid any negative um, impact from any type of, um, you know, um, diagram or, or drawings that might affect uh, the businesses and homeowners. But thank you so much for that. And I do see myself supporting this. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, please, I'm, there's so many uh, attendees we have. So if I don't see anyone's hands raised, please speak up. Councilman Gale. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I don't have a particular question, but I, I do uh, have a, a couple of comments. I, I think that uh, uh, Director Chambers uh, very well identified what this plan is when she mentioned priorities. We live in a society that for the last hundred years has been car oriented and much of the built environment, the roads around us have been designed around cars. And I think we've seen that much of this has been to the detriment of the city of Hartford, Interstate 84, Interstate 91. These have not particularly served us well. Um, and I think that this plan is an attempt to just change the balance slightly so that cars don't have the ultimate priority when we start to look at how to use our streets, that we start to have a better understanding that you and I and everyone on this, uh, this Zoom call are individuals who utilize our city and that we may utilize it in other ways besides being in an automobile. We may be walking around, we may be taking a bicycle. We may be on a scooter now because we have these things. Um, and so um, I, I want, I, I think that everyone needs to understand that this is just, the, the document before us is a conceptual idea of rebalancing what happens when we look at a street? There's nothing specific in this plan. This plan doesn't specifically change Hillside Avenue, for instance, to Councilman Sanchez's uh, example. But it does say that when we're looking at a street, we need to have many different uh, concerns, not just the concerns of an automobile. And I think that's something that's very important moving forward for the quality of life of everyone uh, in Hartford. And so, I, you know, I'm certainly uh, uh, behind this plan. And my second comment is to say, I, I really applaud our planning department. And, and in, in particular, I want to say a, a very special shout out to Sandy Fry, who I think, I, I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but we're losing Sandy. And uh, she's, she's going to be, am I right, this you're, you're retiring in July, Sandy? Yeah, oh, wow. big smile on her face. But that's uh, a big loss. This is a big loss for the city of Hartford. Uh, we are uh, incredibly uh, um, 
advantaged by having such very bright people working in our department who are coming up with the ways in which Hartford can confront the 21st century in a way that's going to work best for, for all the residents here. So I, you know, thank you, Sandy, for all the hard work you've done for all the years that you've done. It's great that we had you for as long as we did. And I'm going to be very sorry personally to lose you. And if you can clone yourself, would you please work on that quickly so that uh, we get a replacement uh, uh, sometime soon? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome, sir. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, um, Ms. Fry, I, could you tell us how long you've been working with the city? I've been with the city for five years, but I've been hanging around transportation planning since 1999 in the region. So I have sort of that long institutional memory of what's been happening. I worked at Krog for a number of years. Oh, okay. So, but it has been a pleasure to work for the city of Hartford and I'm very happy to have this as my final job before I march off to the sunset. Well, we want to tell you, I just want to thank you again personally um, for listening. And again, you know, just for reaching out to the community. Uh, it was just, um, you know, you and Miss Chambers, you know, did an awesome job of educating people what the street plan, what the street um, plan was or is. So that was a huge asset to our city. So I personally want to thank you for doing so. And I also want to say that, you know, uh, thank you very much for all your years of service to the city. And it was a very short time. Uh, but I will have to echo what um, uh, Councilman Gale has said. I didn't know all this went into developing, uh, you know, all this information into a complete street plan. So thank you very much for the education for me. It was a huge full education. And one of the greatest thing I think I have to say when you sent over that memo was working with the tree commission to actually make a lot of these tree, you know, these streets tree line. So this was an awesome, uh, you know, this was totally awesome. So I am going to support this. And, and um, you know, um, when the motion is put on the uh, table uh, to send this back, uh, to the council, you know, favorably. So can we have a motion if there is no more uh, comments, concerns, any other council person? I don't see anyone. Hands, we're good. So move. Okay, is, can we have a second? I have a second. Okay, um, we have a motion that has been uh, properly second. Uh, so how do we vote on this to send this back to the uh, council um, with a favorable recommendation? Okay. Aye. Okay, great. The yay has it. Um, and so, uh, Sandy, yay. thank you for, for one of your final uh, great things you have done for the city. Uh, we really appreciate it. And all the best uh, and good health to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Great. All right. So moving along on the agenda, um, we're going to go to item number four. Uh, this is a resolution uh, from Councilman Sanchez. Uh, that the Court of Common Council uh, urges the closure and decommissioning of Brainerd Airport and that the city of Hartford reclaim the 201 acres of land for more beneficial and environmentally friendly economic development for all residents. This was item 10 on our May 24th agenda. Any questions? Um, I'm not sure if development serve up oh, come Councilman Gale? I, a question uh, through you, Madam Chair, to uh, Councilman Sanchez um, as to whether we have uh, tonight with us uh, a representative from the um, Connecticut Airport Authority or whether if we don't have one from the Airport Authority, whether we could uh, potentially continue this matter to the next a PEDH meeting and get somebody from the airport authority to come in in particular, because I certainly would like to hear from the airport authority as to what is involved in closing an airport. What, what are the practical steps that need to be taken and the costs that might be involved and what might be the alternatives if the airport authority has looked at them, whether there's an alternative to Brainerd. So through you, that's a question to Councilman Sanchez. Councilman Sanchez. Yes, through you, Madam Chair. 
Uh, I'm glad you asked that question, uh, um, Councilman. So I am pending uh, on uh, scheduling a meeting with representatives from the uh, Brandon Airport. Uh, hopefully it'll be this week. Uh, that's one. Uh, and two, I'd just like to speak a little bit about that resolution um, because, um, you know, as everyone uh, is aware, uh, the airport's been with us for over, I, I, I believe it's 100 years. So, you know, in 1959, council at that time all voted to decommission and close down the airport. And at that time, the city of Harper was the specific owner to the airport. So what happened? Uh, the state of Connecticut stepped in. Uh, the runway was much larger than what it is now. And what they were trying to do is build it out to similar to, to the airport in New Haven. So the state came in, took over, and 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 we lost the uh, the 201 acres. So you know, this airport has been operating at a negative revenue and subsidized by the taxpayer of the state of Connecticut. This airport is a prime location of 201 acres of most likely, and it's my understanding, it is the best riverfront on, uh, of you know, Connecticut River in the state. So, you know, I think go on and on. I believe there's some folks that did dial in to be against or for this resolution. I'd like to hear from them. Um, uh, Councilman Sanchez, you're breaking up. Um, so, Councilman Gill, are you putting a motion on the floor to postpone this and invite um, the Connecticut um, Airport Authority to answer some questions for us? Yes, I, I would be happy to do so, Madam Chair. I, I and I would. I, by the way, my mo I, I will happy to happily make that motion. I'm happy to have further conversation tonight, though. But but let me make the motion um, to postpone that so we have the opportunity to bring in uh, the Connecticut Airport Authority, but I also would hope that, um, because I've heard people say that there are studies out there as to the uh, underlying soil um, at Brainerd, uh, that there are already, that there have been uh, studies done that would indicate that it would be very difficult to develop there. Um, and, and I'd be happy to hear uh, from, uh, from those folks, although uh, truth be told, the engineer in me Whenever, whenever I hear that somebody says it can't be done, I say, no, 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 no. It's just a matter of engineering. Of course it can be done. And I see all sorts of people waving their hands on our, on our Zoom here. But in any event, I will make okay. that motion that we continue this on our agenda to the, to the next meeting for further, further discussion, but hope we have some more tonight. Well, I do know we had two speaker. Um, we had uh, Mr. Torres and we had uh, Mr. Um, Lindsay Rutka and with his attorney. And so um, what I think I'm hearing um, from you, Councilman Gale, is getting additional, uh, invite additional uh, people to educate us and talk to us about the other issues. Um, so what I could possibly do, uh, Councilman Gale, if this is something you and Councilman, uh, sent, uh, well, first of all, Councilman Sanchez is the maker of the resolution. If you would like to have a special committee meeting just on this item alone, um, because it appears that it may be a very lengthy conversation, uh, we can possibly do so. So I, I will take my directive from the committee members of what you would like to see happening. I, happy to do that, Madam Chair. Uh, but but I but since these folks are here tonight, I'm also happy to hear from them if they've taken time out of their schedules. Sure. Join us. I I, I think respect uh, from the committee would calls for us to at least give Absolutely. them some. Absolutely. So I know Councilman Sanchez has to uh, um, run. I'm sure he probably was listening on his phone. Uh, so we have, as I said, we had two speakers who were signed up to speak on this issue. Uh, is Mr. Torres uh, is on the phone or here? P. Torres? Hello? Well, maybe we, we lost Mr. Torres. Hello? If you're here, you need to unmute yourself on the telephone.
All right. Um, we'll find out if Mr. Torres is joining us. We have also uh, Lindsay um, Rutka and Attorney Rayner. Are we here, Mr. Rutka and um, Mr. Rayner? Attorney Rayner? Yeah, yes. this is Lindsay Rutka and Michael's on. Mr. Okay. Uh, the, floor is, the floor is yours, sir. You can let us know uh, what you'd like to let us know um, regarding this item. Um, Mike, why don't you start off with, and sure. I just want to just get some bullet points, and then I know we'll come back to this uh, at a later agenda. Sure, sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Reiner. I represent uh, Hartford Jet Center, whose principal member is Lindsay Rutka. I believe when Councilman Sanchez was talking about meeting with people, I believe he was talking about meeting with us, uh, and that meeting has not been scheduled. It was something that we reached out to him to set. Uh, just to be clear, Hartford Jet Center operates the real property that is known as Brainerd Airport under a lease with the state of Connecticut. The actual airport is operated by the FAA and the CAA. Um, we, we share Councilman Gale's uh, opinion that we should seek a continuance of this agenda item. Uh, but we ask, uh, in addition to just having a, uh, the CAA involved, we, we encourage and want the members of the committee to physically view the facility and to understand and consider the positive synergies that exist with Hartford Jet Center and Hartford. Um, and that uh, an expansion of this relationship and not its extinguishment is in the city's best interest. There are several businesses that operate under uh, Hartford Jet Center's um, management of the property that directly benefit uh, the city of Hartford. I'm not certain what the negative revenue uh, um, piece that was mentioned. I don't think there's a, a, a specific uh, revenue uh, that, that there's negative revenue coming from the airport, but I do know that businesses operate there, that there's personal property taxes that are being paid uh, from that location and um, very viable businesses operate within the confines of the, of the acreage that, is the uh, uh, under Hartford Jet Center's um, management. Thanks, Lindsay, Mike. if you, you- Yeah, no, let me chime in a little bit on this. Uh, thank you committee for inviting me uh, and also, um, onto this meeting here. Um, we've been operating the Hartford Jet Center for the last seven to eight years. And when I came to Hartford uh, back in the early eighties, I had a, vision. I, I grew up in the country and I came over Route 2 and I saw the, the Wizard of Oz city here of Hartford and it became my my adopted home for all these years and I started my first business at 19. So I'm pretty much tied to the city. Um, our apartment buildings that we've had and work with the community for all of these years. <clears throat> so when we took on Hartford Jet, <clears throat> we saw a jewel uh, that could be cultivated in, in, in having inner city kids and in the community all involved with uh, this type of an airport that offers so many different type of types of opportunities. One is, um, I'm just going through some bullet points and again, we'll come back at a later time and invite everybody to come down to the airport. Uh, look at what we have, look at the vision um, that I see. And um, and I know we can make it work. We know it can be a viable, sustainable um, for tourism, for jobs, for manufacturing. Uh, it's, it's already there. So to take what we have and remove a mode of transportation uh, and these jobs and manufacturing and repairs uh, to aircraft and, and pilots and uh, uh, is is would be a, a dishonored to the 100 years of what uh, Brainerd Airport has served our community. Uh, some of the things that we have here, and I was going down through a list, is that um, you know we have the colleges, Trinity College, UConn, a lot of the colleges, uh, a lot of parents and uh, bring their kids in here. They come and tour our schools because we do have a, a local airport. They stay with us for several days they're in our community they're downtown there are restaurants uh we have we just opened up a charter business so right now we've started flying to uh like martha's vineyard uh, uh nantucket 
uh, New York. Uh, we're going to be expanding our service so that we can have more commuters and more availability to people who live in Hartford and the surrounding towns to be able to do business and bring business back here and, and uh, stay here uh, in our city of Hartford. Um, as far as uh, hospitals, I think we have 18 hospitals within 20 minutes or so. We have the air ambulance that comes in that brings in kidneys, hearts, and so forth that are critical to patients uh, and to our family members that uh, get shared at the Children's Hospital, Hartford Hospital, St. Francis. Um, and we have uh, vets uh, that we that get trained here as well um, for additional uh, certifications for aircraft and, and safety. Uh, there's three aviation schools. One of them takes kids that are in our community and they take them all the way to, to the big airlines. So we're very grateful that we have one of those type of schools here that if anyone has a career orientated uh, aviation pilot degree, they'll, they'll bring you all the way to that. These jobs are a hundred to $300,000 a year. I'm not sure if everybody knows that we also have a school, vocational school at the uh, end of the runway. <clears throat> Each of the kids that come out of there, it's a two year program. Every kid that comes out of there is guaranteed a 28 to about $40 an hour job in the aviation manufacturing or repair. Uh, we, really need to look at and increase that size of that school and have more instructors and teachers there. And, and again, reach out to our inner city kids that, that, that are able to have the vocational uh, hardware to be able to uh, take on these type of positions. And again, so I think we have lost. Mr. As far as, okay, I'm there sorry. we go. Oh, I'm sorry. And as far as environmentally, uh, we just applied, or one of our schools just applied for the first electric aircraft to be here at Brainerd from, for the East Coast. They've already started doing it on the West Coast. Um, I know he's been uh, applying for grants and trying to get uh, to uh, state level to be able to fund the program. I think it's going to be a game changer in aviation uh, to be the first uh, electrified uh, aircraft uh, station here. Uh, I think that's going to be really important for the future. And guys, we need to look at our future. You know, we have a river that does come up from the sound. Uh, the practicality of using this land and, and really viewing the river with the dikes is a little difficult. That's the same problem they have in East Hartford, same thing we have in the North and North Hartford, same thing that we have in East Hartford over in the Meadows. Um, you know, is it a beautiful view? Yes, only if you're able to have high rise buildings and be able to look over the, you know, look over the dikes. But the best use was in a report from the Legislative Committee 2016. It is online. It tells you what the economic impact is for our region. So I think it's $43 million back then. I think if, and I know if we can get together with the city and with our vision here at the Hartford Jet Center and at Brainerd Airport, that we can have the sustainable, viable manufacturing jobs build some more buildings down here that will bring in more students. We can have an aviation college here. We do not have one in our state. Other states have them. If you've been up to LaGuardia or JFK, these guys, they, they've invested into an aviation college and, and, wow. and those students stay right in those areas. Yeah, so awesome. anyhow, I'll leave it at that. We're inviting you uh, all, hopefully shortly to have a yeah, you know how you're meeting with us and visit the airport. Yes. I've been trying to get the city, some of the city council people and, and state legislative members to come down to really see what we have that's going to support our community for jobs long into the next century. Thanks for the talk. Thank you, um, Mr. Rocca. I know um, if you're not speaking, could everyone please mute your mic 
uh, for us, please. We would really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to try to see if uh, Mr. Torres is still here. Mr. Torres? I'm here. Can you hear oh, me? Yes, sir, we can. Please go ahead. I I've been juggling uh, one other meeting and stuff, and it, when you're at it all day, it, it, it's no fun. So I thought it was important enough to address I thought it was important enough to address uh, and give a short synopsis on uh, Granite Road and, and the airport. So, okay. Please go ahead, Mr. Torres. Okay, so uh, um, according to the Connecticut General Assembly, operating Granite Airport cost the state about a million dollars every year. Meanwhile, the city of Hartford received a dwindling proportion of the airport's total tax value for going approximately uh, 1.6 million in unrealized revenue. And that was as of uh, 2015. Uh, I don't have the uh, latest numbers with me. But unlike Bradley Airport, uh, a regional hub with several commercial airlines, only people chartering a plane or who own one can use Brenner. The state owns the airport. It funds it like the rest of the public transit network. And this is wrong. Uh, taxpayers should not be subsidizing flights on private planes and jets. Yeah. Public transportation should be available to the many, not the few. And at the very least, uh, Connecticut should charge customers uh, that commensurate with the actual cost of the, its operation. And, and, and there is, however, a, a far better solution. Brenner Airport sits on 200 plus acres of the best riverfront property in all of central Connecticut. Uh, the recommendation has been that reclaiming and, and developing a new neighborhood which embraces its role in connecting residents to the river and will contribute more tax revenue to the city and the state is without question much better for the constituency, not only in the city of Hartford, but those who live on the border of uh, Southwest and Wethersfield. To establish an equitable development, you'd have to empower the Hartford NRZs to have a decisive influence on the project, right? Uh, so by spreading the construction costs for future development across several phases occurring over many years, uh, the intention is to create a pattern of sustainable development, which provides a steady source of work and minimizes the impact on neighboring communities. Uh, with that being said, uh, as a resident of Southwest Hartford and, and a taxpayer, I uh, I am for the resolution that uh, Councilman Chan Sanchez has put forth, urging the closure and decommissioning of, of Brennan Airport. Uh, I think that the city could do so much more uh, with the way things are right now, with the closure of Mira, the trash and energy plant. Uh, redeveloping uh, the airport and reclaiming uh, the riverfront. Uh, although it won't be overnight, but st slow and steady progress uh, w with the uh, local communities, uh, with Wethersfield, with East Hartford, I think it's uh, an opportunity that could be lost if, if it, we don't continue to uh, move forward um, and looking far ahead into the future. Thank you for your time. No, thank you, Mr. Torres, for um, sharing your thoughts and your views with us. Uh, Councilman uh, LeBron, you had a comment, question? Yes, yes, uh, Councilwoman Surgeon. So I apologize for not being on at the beginning of, of, of this. And um, just in regards to for that, uh, formatting through you, Madam Chair, um, are we having the public here to comment on this as well? Um, so that's my first question, uh, Councilwoman Surgeon. Uh, uh, no, sir, but um, one of the things I try to do is, uh, you know, if there is an interested party, um, Mr. Rutka, Mr. Rayner uh, asked, I, since this was Councilman Sanchez's resolution, I asked him, did he have anyone who he would like to speak on the issue? Okay. Um, we gave him, anyone the opportunity to, um, to converse and let council know um, their point of view and their thoughts on this issue. There is not a public hearing on this issue, or we have, I call it open mic, the first Monday of our council meeting that people can speak on any issue. 
But as a uh, committee chair, I'd like to hear from the, the different uh, people in our community, uh, their opinion and listen to what they have to say before making decisions. Thank you, Council, uh, Madam Chair. I think that th you basically answered my second question because sure. you know, I saw you sent the email in the chat for Sadai, uh, Ms. Lee, in terms of uh, garnering uh, public input. And the reason why I just mentioned it is because I see a lot of um, chats or chatter. Yes. And it's just hard to follow and stuff like that. And it, you can see the energy that's coming through from yes. those folks. And I, I think you answered the question that, you know, the energy is probably better served in the forum that you uh, recommended or that you just stated. So that way we can, the entire council can hear it. Um, because of the energy that I'm feeling, they may be they may become frustrated because they're putting all the energy in the chat where probably the energy should be focused on uh, what you just mentioned, number one, and then number two, um, the email to Sadai. So thank you, Madam Chair, um, uh, for clearing that, clearing that up for me. I appreciate it. And that's exactly right, Councilman LeBron. As I was reading through the chat and I wasn't able to keep track of every, everything everyone was saying. Uh, you know, some people believe that we could use the airport, uh, use our STEM program, do a school. Um, some people in the chat talked about, you know, there's gonna be a shortage of um, uh, pilots, you know, why aren't we training people? So to give everyone uh, an opportunity, I shared with everyone uh, today's Lee email address. We will have a um, councilman, um, Gail, um, you know, suggested we postpone this uh, item and have a special committee meeting just dedicated to this uh, item alone so we can have um, people like uh, who is on the chat uh, come to the committee meeting and express their, um, their viewpoints on the different issue. Any other questions, concerns from the committee members or any? Um, Oh, Mr. Gail, I'm sorry, Councilman Gail, go ahead, sir. No, this is Sanchez. I'm sorry, Councilman Sanchez, go ahead, sir. So, so I, I apologize if I got cut off. I think I lost signal, but I, I, I did hear just about everyone speaking, including Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, you are correct. I am looking forward to having a meeting uh, with you, and I will be reaching out because uh, my schedule has changed at work, and I have to work around that. And then, um, and I am definitely looking to hearing all sides and maybe we can collaborate and, and, and decide what's the best avenue to take and, and you know, in the future of the uh, Brenner Airport. I, I would like to also um, let you know that I, I was fortunate to have toured the, um, the, uh, the school there. Um, I, f I forgot the name of the school, but I was definitely there. It was is a great school. I highly support them. My brother is a pilot. I did try to get my license, but you know, when you're in the military, they locate you often. Um, but I do support the school there. I am not looking to um, see them leave. I, I do believe that they do not. Um, there's not. There's. It's not necessary to have a tarmac for um, avionics. Uh, but with that said, um, I'm looking forward to um, uh, continuing this conversation. And I would like to make a motion, Madam Chair, if it's okay with you. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to postpone my resolution so that we can continue the conversation and, uh, and, then, and of course, uh, schedule some meetings. It's talking at I'd Great. Uh, Councilman Gale, I saw your hand up. Councilman Gale? I believe he probably stepped away. No, no. Can you, can you hear me, Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Go right ahead, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. I... Give me one second. I... Like everyone's having All right. It. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I lost my signal on one device and I had to move to another. Um, I, I fully, well, I, I made the same motion. And so I certainly fully support Councilman Sanchez's motion. Um, I do want to say to all the proponents, uh, uh, having listened to Mr. Rutka very carefully, what I heard was how Brainerd Airport is a regional center 
that serves the region. And I think one of the things that the residents of the city of Hartford want to hear is how does Brainerd help the city of Hartford? We all know that we have spent much of the last 60 years serving the region and not getting much in return. And this has been a constant source of tension between the city and our suburban neighbors. I think we all wanna to work together, but for that reason, I encourage everyone to, to help explain how we, the residents of Hartford, will benefit from a Brainerd um, as opposed to a way in which we could benefit by using Brainerd in some alternative. That's the balance that I, as a council person, it seems to me have to, uh, have to take into consideration. And so I wanna hear more about it and I support Councilman Sanchez's motion. Uh, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion in the floor and it was properly second uh, to postpone the item uh, for a special committee meeting, uh, hopefully uh, maybe later on in the, in the month. Uh, um, also in uh, asking or inviting, you know, uh, people from the, the airport, the Connecticut Airport Authority, uh, and any members of anyone who has information regarding the environmental issue at that site, I will certainly invite back um, Mr. Rudka and Mr. Rayner and Mr. Torres, and then hopefully uh, anyone who want to speak at that committee meeting from the community will sign up um, with the email I put in the chat. So do we want to, uh, so how do we vote on sending this item, uh, postponing this item for a special committee meeting? Uh, Yay. Okay. Ms. Rossetti? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. So, okay. So we have the votes to postpone the, um, this item for a, um, a special committee meeting um, in the near future. And we'll send that date out to everyone and invite and everyone can sign up uh, because there was such energy in the chat that I believe that we really need um, by um, speaking, uh, not everyone at the uh, a television can read all the chat that's going on. So hopefully when we have this special committee meeting, uh, people in the chat can actually sign up to speak and so the residents and everyone and all the council members uh, can hear your opinion. So I wanna thank you all for um, coming and I wanna thank you all for uh, letting us on how you feel. And we wanna continue to do so at the next special uh, committee meeting, just only for this item. So we'll have the entire committee meeting uh, dedicated to this item. So we'll have time for everyone to speak. So we have one more item on our agenda. And that is a presentation um, from Development Services regarding the Bushnell South um, project. I apologize to the council members uh, for the late notice, but I felt that it was an opportunity uh, that we keep track of all developments that is going on within the city. And when Development Services reach out to do a presentation to us, uh, I, I, I apologize again for the late notice but want to make sure that this information is shared with all council member. So uh, Ms. Howard, are you starting? Are you here? I am. Thank you, Councilman oh. Surgeon. Okay, so the floor is yours, ma'am. Great, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Surgeon, and thank you, council members. Um, just real quickly, I'd just like to um, let you know, unfortunately, because we postponed the land bank, um, we did actually have our new director of blight here, and she's actually stayed on this call. So just so everyone's aware, oh, it's a good staff child. Is she still, Aaron, is she still here? <laughs> she is still here. So I just Will wanted to make sure- Please introduce her to us. Um, um, hi, Charles, do you wanna take the lead? Uh, yeah, well, I'd say hello. Oh. Good, uh, good evening, um, oh, Madam Chair, okay. Councilwoman Surgeon. Good oh. evening to uh, Councilwoman Rossetti, uh, Councilman Sanchez, to uh, Councilman Gale, and to Councilman LeBron and other attendees for this committee meeting. I'm very happy to, to meet you, um, although it be on the internet. Uh, but I, I do appreciate the moment to say hello and introduce myself and very happy to have joined uh, DDS and to work on your housing, blight remediation, uh, residential licensing, and other related matters under I Charles. Thank you. Well, thank you and welcome. And um, we welcome aboard. Well, thank, thank you. you. Welcome aboard. Uh, and but you will have an opportunity 
uh, next month to talk to us more about these properties. Is that correct? Yes, that'll be done through DDS. Yep. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Erin, for doing that. Um, oh, no uh, so your floor is yours, ma'am. Great. Thank you. And thank you again. Uh, we're great, grateful for the time and we appreciate you accommodating the Bushnell South project. Um, just real quickly, um, the city of Hartford um, has been partnering with um, CRDA, the Bushnell and Spinnaker developers to uh, look at a redevelopment strategy for the Bushnell South project. Um, as you know, Bushnell South was identified as one of our 10 transformative projects in the most recent um, updated POCD. Um, so we're really excited about this um, proposed development plan. So what you're here tonight for is I'm going to introduce you to um, our consultants, um, Kathleen Enoffer, I can never say her name correctly, so I apologize for that, and then Ben Carlson from Goody Clancy. Um, they're going to kind of go through a presentation, um, just introducing everyone here about the Bushnell South project, what we're trying to do, and really start talking about um, gaining some feedback. Um, council members, you are stakeholders as part of this overall development strategy, and we're looking uh, to you to learn more about this project and to get more engaged as the project moves forward. Um, two points I would just share. Um, this group has presented to um, both Frog Hollow and Soto as of last month, um, and we will have a formal um, or more open community meeting, hopefully tentatively scheduled for June 23rd. Um, also, before I hand it off, I'd like to point out that we do have some folks from the consortium on this call. Uh, obviously, you have I. Charles Matthews. Um, Amy Peters was on this before. Um, Susan Hopgood from CRDA is on the call. I believe David Fay from the Bushnell is also on this call. Um, and I think that's who we have for the consortium along with our um, consultants. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Kathleen and Ben. Okay. Great, I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, and with Aaron's great introduction, uh, we might get to uh, move forward some of the, these items. Um, we're going to err on the side of being speedy uh, and give us, make sure we get a chance to return to questions um, and some of the more detailed findings as they, they really fit your needs. Um, but as Aaron uh, sort of spoke to, we're really um, looking at this core area um, of the sort of, of Bushnell South. Um, and, you know, for the last couple of decades, the, really at the center of that area, the sort of major surface parking lots um, being one of the, the really predominant features um, of the area. And as she cited in the, in the just adopted POCD, um, you know, Hartford 2035, really like raise out the vision for what this area could be as one of those 10 focus areas is a new mixed use mid-rise neighborhood and arts and entertainment district linking Main Street to the Capitol and Park Street to Bushnell Park. Um, and so you know, our um, effort really seeks to try, try and build on um, and visualize how we might implement um, that core vision that's in the POCD plan. As she said, this is really a, a partnership um, to bring a, a number of really core stakeholders um, to the table on, on how to move forward with the shared vision and strategy for the area. And we think that's particularly important because um, you know, in thinking of this area, we want to make sure that each project, each development is really contributing to a district that is greater than the sum of its parts, where each of these projects are really building on each other um, to achieve that overall um, effect. This has been uh, with Goody Clancy, and um, this effort you know, really aims to build upon the work that City of Hartford has put into the iQuilt planning effort, which goes back over 10 years. Um, so the graphics on this diagram uh, echo um, sort of the, the colors and, and the patterns of that and that intention that, that Kathleen spoke to of, of really knitting together different pieces and, and helping all of downtown Hartford and its neighborhoods and its open space assets and economic assets really work um, together. And so as we think about this area between you know, Main Street on the east Trinity and Washington on the west, and, and Book, Buckingham up to Elm Street and Bushnell Park. Um, it's how do we make that not only the nucleus of a very vibrant mixed use place, but also something that's very well connected to the rest of Hartford and helps connect people and districts to each other. And so we'll, we'll share some, some thoughts in, in preliminary visualizations of, of the buildings, the activities, the public places, 
um, that could happen here to really make it a vibrant neighborhood. Um, and also some, some improvements to the public realm, making streets walkable um, and, and really fulfilling the, the, the um, ideas of the complete streets plan that we heard about earlier this evening um, to make this a really wonderful place for people um, and one that's connected to Bushnell Park and, and all the assets that are around it. So I'm going to share a few sketches and I want to emphasize that these are not um, formal proposals at this time. These are sketches that we've created during this process really to spark discussion. Um, they're, they're sort of what if possibility. What if we did this um, to, to spark conversation and, and there may be ideas here that you, that you really um, uh, like and appreciate and there might be you know, ideas you say, I have, I have a different idea of how to do that. And we welcome all that input. Um, and, and that's, that's the, uh, the, the breadth of input we've, we've invited from neighborhood residents as well. So one example, here we are at, uh, we're at Buckingham uh, Street looking toward Bushnell Theater, Presbyterian Church. Um, we, we see the improvements made to the state office building and the park there. Um, and see this as an opportunity to take even more advantage of the state investment in, in the park and in that building um, and our institutions and neighborhood connections to make this a really vibrant square um, that, that is a place people want to go to because you can, you can, um, you can have food here, um, you can meet friends, um, whether you are on your way to a performance at the Bushnell um, or, or you, you're just coming here in the middle of the day um, to meet some friends. Um, and so these are examples of the types of character um, we might want to see here. Um, places where you can you can stage um, planned events, um, but also um, just have, have you know, gatherings that serve the community every day. Capitol Avenue, um, here the uh, Presbyterian Church is on our left. Um, we're looking past the newly constructed uh, parking structure on the left, which is an, an important piece of infrastructure for this effort. Um, that plus the new state parking structure at Buckingham and Washington have, have really made it possible to rethink parking as, as the primary use and, and think about this as, as something different and, and as a place for people. So here, um, you know, this might be the place where we have, um, you know, a whole neighborhood of, of housing. Uh, there's, there's room for um, a thousand units or so uh, on a few blocks here, um, a thousand units and households to really make this their home and bring these streets alive um, and support um, retail and community services that are sustained by a neighborhood and, and by all the, the people who work in this district um, for the state and others, um, but also who come here uh, because it is a cultural destination. Um, and so again, these are you know, some of the types of, of spaces we would see here. Um, so taking the, the nice investment in the park, um, but making it um, more accessible, more tables, seating opportunities for people to gather. Further down Capitol, looking um, toward the west, uh, toward, the, toward the Capitol, um, it's really you know, changing the dominance of the cars and the parking lots um, and, and making these sidewalks that are, are really pleasant to walk along, um, sidewalks that are deeper and further away from the traffic um, and edged by active uses. And we think there's an opportunity for a real mix. We've talked about retail and services being in some of these places. Um, but we also see great opportunity to connect the tradition of the historic um, townhomes, the row houses that we see um, on the blocks of, of Capitol and Buckingham near Main Street and continue that pattern of, of front doors and stoops coming down to the street and have a great mix of, of a residential setting um, and, and, and a retail setting and a cultural setting because there might be other arts uses uh, that could be here as well. Um, and and you know, opportunities for dining, um, possibly for other culture or media partners um, and for public art activities um, that can happen every day. Um, looking down Wadsworth Street, this is a, a neighborhood street that comes up from, from Park Street. Um, you know, here we see a great opportunity to really connect into Bushnell Park. Um, and we're looking down West Street, which is a, a lightly traveled alley, which continues um, up there. Uh, you know, the idea here would be to be Again, creating more housing um, to help be that sort of the main frame uh, that is su sustaining this as a neighborhood. Um, ground floor services and making uh, West Street and, and the neighborhood streets um, great places to walk or bike um, to get to, oops, sorry, get to Bushnell Park in, in the distance. Um, and, you know, there might, these might be 
uh, might be lightly traveled by cars, but a place that you can have a festival uh, in the street um, and have, have a broader greenway along it um, to really help connect um, uh, South Downtown, um, Fog Hollow and other, other parts of, of South Hartford um, into the core. Um, and, and I should say an opportunity to, to support infill moving south. We're focused mostly at you know, Buckingham to the north, but the idea is to, to bring that investment to the south as well. Um, and these are the types of, of you know, housing units and buildings that might make a transition from the two and three story scale that we see to the south to a five or six or seven story scale, maybe taller um, as, you, as you move um, toward Capitol Avenue. Um, and again, this, this view here, um, this is west at Capitol, um, it's sort of another um, you know, vision of, of you know, what we could do with West Street and, and take that, that public right of way and actually make it uh, a place that can sustain more activity, um, you know, not, not mainly for cars, but for, but for people. Um, and so you know, we've been working together with Bushnell Consortium um, and uh, with, with the city uh, very closely, um, and other partners, CRDA and Spinnaker Development, which owns some of the land, um, to think about you know, what are those critical goals and benefits we wanna see coming back to the city of Hartford and, and its people as this investment happens. And so um, these are some of the priorities here. Um, uh, home ownership, um, workforce housing at a range of price points, um, opportunities for, for uh, people to, to uh, work on the construction here, uh, the jobs that will be developed, um, arts and cultural programming and bringing in um, not just the Bushnell, which has been a, a huge leader, as you know, for, uh, for a long time here, um, but other partners too. Um, public space and sustainability goals um, and honoring the historic context. And so th these, th this represents questions we've been posing to neighborhood members uh, but we also welcome your uh, your comments as well. Um, and you know, we leave with the question of what would, you make, would make you feel welcome in this district um, as a resident or as a visitor or as a worker, what will make it feel like a seamless part of the broader neighborhood and of Hartford. And with that, we, we look forward to your questions and comments. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Carlson, for sharing that with us. Uh, do we have any comments, questions from the committee? If you take your slide down, that'd be great. Yeah. You may not be able to see everyone's hands. Any other council members? I can't see anyone. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll be happy to. Uh, yes, please, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. And, and thank you for that presentation. Uh, you know, very similar to Dono North, where we have uh, parking lots along Main Street that have lined, lie, uh, were laid fallow for, uh, in some cases, almost 50 years um, since the late 60s and certainly into the 70s. This area has been uh, a wasteland uh, for a, a very long time. Um, I'm, I'm guessing close to 40 years for most of this has been parking lots. So any kind of development is thrilling to me. I, I, I guess the real question is how real is any of this? Uh, <laughs> these, are, uh, these are wonderful plans, but um, what does it take? What, what, what uh, you know, how can, well, personally, how can I as a city council member be helpful? I would love to see development there. I, I don't think we're getting much in the way of taxes from any of this land right now. Um, and, uh, and it certainly doesn't help with connectivity in the city. So um, uh, how real is any of this and what can we do to move it forward? An important part of our effort has been really looking at feasibility, not just the physical space, but the economics. And uh, I think we've, it's, um, as the consortium was deliberately put together to, to bring those perspectives uh, in place, we have um, Spinnaker Development, which uh, is an um, experienced developer who purchased the 55 Elm Street property, uh, which would be the, probably the first reinvestment, is, is converting that to housing or another active use. Um, so they're at the table and, and providing great perspective on um, what, what's working for them in terms of market opportunity. Um, we have um, CRDA at the table. Um, and on our own team, we have an economic consultant as well. So we have been looking very closely at 
um, the economics of investment both near term because we want to make sure we can get started successfully um, and then continue um, investment over time. And you know, what would it what would it cost to, to upgrade streets and sidewalks? Um, so so that's all part of the planning and um, we'll, we'll be sharing more more information um, you know later this month um, on you know on that path to implementation making it real. If it is Councilman Gale. Okay. Um, Mr. Carson, my, my question is, um, you said you've done two presentations to different community groups so far in the neighborhood. What have, what kind of response have you received from them? And then also, um, I, I totally have to echo what Councilman Gale says, how soon can this be done? Uh, I work right there in the state building. And so for me, uh, the workforce housing would be totally awesome, but you guys got to hurry up with this, you know, for this to get done. Uh, you know, they're very limited um, food area uh, in that neighborhood for uh, state employees and, you know, people who live in the neighborhood. So that would be an awesome welcome uh, for me to actually see I can walk out instead of actually, you know, walking in concrete and actually see something tree lined and actually see people milling around. Uh, it would be a welcome site. Uh, it's a very lonely and desolate area. The only time uh, I actually see people, uh, and it's so funny, I look forward to when the Bushnell Theater has uh, a program. And as state employees leave at five, you know, the patrons are coming and it's nice to say, hi, how is everyone? Uh, so this would be really nice to actually see uh, people in that neighborhood. So how soon are we talking about? And, um, and you know, what is the cost and are you putting together your numbers and so on and so forth? And what is the response so far from the community groups? In terms of time frame, I mean, our, our goal, and, and I mean, it's very much the goal of the consortium is to, to make this happen um, as, as soon as possible. Um, you know, there's work underway right now on the 55 Elm Street uh, project. Um, uh, with CRDA and, and the city um, and the developer working together on that. Um, so, you know, that's moving forward. And, uh, you know, now that parking parking has been uh, relocated to parking structures, um, you know, there's, there's really no obstacle except um, just getting plans in place, um, getting approvals, um, setting up financing. Um, so, you know, those are the steps we'll be enumerating in the next a month really uh, to make this more clear. And I might let either Erin or Kathleen or both of you feel free to jump in on what we've heard from community members. Yeah, and I mean, I, th I think one of the things similar to your um, perspective and we, we absolutely heard in, in community members benefited from some other state employees um, or courts employees who, who had joined the meeting um, that week as well is folks being really excited about the idea of there being activity on those sidewalks, really getting away from that, that desolated barren environment um, and, and being a, a place that they really felt welcome to walk in their neighborhood um, and thought the connection to the park was really important to continue to sort of build upon um, and stress. So we, we heard a lot about that and a, a lot of excitement for how um, doing if we were able to achieve the, the build out of this as a district, that that could um, be transformative in, in terms of really sort of functioning as a neighborhood um, and, and feeling um, like it could offer real amenity and support um, that level of activity. Um, you know, I think we similarly, you know, heard and, and something we want to continue to emphasize is that doing the new development well also means, um, you know, really respecting the importance of the design of the historic buildings that are, are still there. So we've got a nice opportunity to sort of to bring new buildings to this area while really building upon the historic architecture that's there. And, and that definitely also came up as a community question. Um, thank you, Kathleen. And I totally agree. Um, I think what I saw in design, you know, the uh, rural townhouses, that really is beautifully as you're going, uh, you know, on Capitol uh, or Buckingham going um, east to actually stay within that design. It, the historic design, uh, it's really a wonderful thing to have as an asset 
uh, in Hartford. Uh, I know everybody likes bright and shiny things, but, you know, just having, uh, you can have bright and shiny things inside, but, you know, having an historical look, uh, making feel of a warmth in a community. So I want to commend you for keeping that historic look. Um, that is really important um, for me uh, uh, as a Hartford resident. Uh, so would you please keep us informed as you go along uh, from where you are? And um, as Councilman Gail says, what, uh, you know, council uh, can help uh, to make this happen. And then on a personal note, as a state employee, I'm also looking forward uh, to having uh, additional um, eateries in that neighborhood. So thank you for that, instead of me Ubering all the time. Uh, any any well, other I comments? Like the way you think, Councilwoman. Oh, go ahead, Councilman Rizzetti. No, I just said I like the way you think, Councilwoman. Thank you, Councilwoman <laughs> Surgeon. <laughs> Councilman <laughs> Rizzetti. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Councilman Gale. Uh, yeah, Madam Chair, I'm just wondering um, whether our development services team, if any of them are, are still with us, if anybody wants to kind of chime in and let us know, um, I, you know, I, I, I guess it would be important for us to know that our development services team supports this plan. I'm not sure, I, I assume that's the case, but I don't know. I, I think it would be important. And I also would like to know, you know, where CRDA uh, sits on this since it, they might end up being, you know, a very large player in making stuff happen. So just wondering if there's any comment on that, those two fronts. Sure. I, is CRD on the phone on the on our um Susan Hopgood is on this call. I don't know. Oh. Um so Susan is here. Um from okay. the city's perspective, I can assure you that we were heavily involved in this process. Um, we're very much a partner in the overall proposed development. Um, we've been really focused on making sure that whatever the proposed development plan really meets the needs of the neighborhoods um, and really connects that area and really connects the Bushnell uh, Park. And so that's really what, where the focus has been to date. Um, and we're excited to see what happens next. Um, we know that there's we're, we're working with the consultant team on building out a proposed development, like phased out development plan for the section. Um, that's the intent of the June 23rd uh, proposed date for a community meeting at the Bushnell uh, to really start unveiling um, all these thoughts, comments, um, and the engagement across the board over the past couple of months uh, to really talk about what a phased development plan could look like. Um, so we are very much at the table. Um, we're excited to see where this goes next. Um, and I see that Susan is here. Um, I know CRDA is a huge partner, so I'll give her a chance to kind of share CRDA's position. We've, yes, Mike and I have been involved um, and because we readily um, accept that we're probably going to be called on with assist, assisting to financing the project and have been involved in in understanding and providing input and and uh, listening to the neighborhood, uh, which is one of the more important components of this. So um, yes, we've been heavily involved and have the expectation that we will be um, approached for financing. Thanks, Susan. And I, I would also add um, as a commitment, um, 55 Elm was really the first jump off of this overall redevelopment in the area. And that was, you know, we didn't want to hold off on doing 55 Elm to wait for this planning effort. There was a real desire to really start that excitement. Um, and so CRDA has already made that commitment. Um, you know, this group committee council has already, already worked with Spinnaker on this development project. So we're really excited to see what happens there. Um, also keep in mind that the state of Connecticut is also selling property on Trinity Street. And so that RFP was out. And so um, I know that CRDA has been heavily involved in discussions with the state to make sure that whoever purchases those state buildings in that area um, works with this consortium to make sure that the overall development of that entire area works well together. So uh, we're actually creating a plan, but trying to implement it kind of all at the same time. Um, and I think the goal is once we make those investments, I think from CRDA, they continue to build on those investments and reinvest into that area, um, which is why this planning process is so critical and key for all of us um, as we start to figure out what those next steps are, what a timeline looks like for redevelopment in that area. Uh, so, and I, um, and I would add on, on 55 Elm, um, we do have bond approval, so we do have the funding uh, for 55 Elm to proceed. We, we have not gone for funding for anything else because we don't have 
um, we don't have financials, but you know, our, our funding, it's all dependent on, on the bond council, the bond committee of the state giving us the money for projects. So we do have that for 55 Elm. And as we get proposals going forward, then we'll, we'll request bond approval for additional financing. Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Opgood. Um, Aaron, um, you said this, the consortium is made up of the Bushnell and a uh, couple other institution. Do we mm -hmm. have anyone from the Bushnell to speak on this? David, I believe David was on this call. Um, I don't see him now. Um, so I apologize for that. That's okay. Um, we kind of went in a little bit late today. Um, that's fine. So who else is on as a part of the consortium? You said it was Bushnell. Um, sorry. And who else? Spinnaker. Uh, Spinnaker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Spinnaker has made that commitment already. 55 Elm, they purchased that. Um, their yep. plan, yes. yep. as I think you know, is to subdivide that lot um, mm -hmm. and to do two more new construction on that lot alone. Um, so we're excited for that too. <laughs> okay. Great. I know, Erin, you really are um, uh, inundated with the great development we're having in the city. Uh, I am very pleased uh, to see uh, some new development and, uh, you know, getting properties back on our uh, city tax roll. I know um, that's one of the reasons Councilman uh, Sanchez had proposed about this, uh, the airport is trying to get property like that um, parking desert. Uh, you know, on capital and getting those properties back on our tax roll. Uh, so Erin, thank you for all the hard work you're doing. Uh, and thank your director, Mr. Matthews. Uh, I'm not sure if he's still on. Um, he is. Oh, I'm sorry. There were so many, I can't see everyone. Um, uh, Mr. Matthews, do you have anything to add, sir? You're on mute, I, Charles. You're muted, I, Charles. Was that was that the baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a dog now. Oh, I think I think I won't follow that, uh, Madam Chair. Aaron has said it all. Thank you, Aaron. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thank you. And I want also, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, sir. Madam yes, Chair, I would I would add I would okay. add one more thing. I yes, thought that um, the Soto meeting went extremely well, and I would also comment. Um, that there were many changes to the plan after the Soto meeting, reflecting the comments and the requests of the neighborhood. So I think that's important to raise here as well. You know, um, Ms. Zapkas, I really want to thank you very much for adding that, um, because I think it's so important that the community who live in the neighborhood have input on what their community should look like. Uh, so thank you guys for reaching out to all the different NRZs and that's going to be affected by this neighborhood, because I believe, you know, with their support, you will have a, a great successful uh, development uh, with the community buying into this. Um, so again, thank you, Erin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Carson, um, Ms. Upgood. Thank you very much for uh, joining us and letting us know. Oh, and also, Ms. Upgood, thank you and thanks, Serda, uh, for all the help in getting a lot of our development uh, um, from uh, on the city uh, books, um, all you can do in helping us with financing. Uh, so please thank you and your board uh, for us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, do a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Huh? Councilman Sanchez, you're back also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made it back. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've got a second, I'm sure. Um, second. Thank you. So the missing the meeting has been adjourned. Um, and so we will let everyone know when the special committee meeting will be held. Uh, thank everyone for joining us and giving us your input. Uh, this is really a true uh, information sharing uh, with the committee and the community because they can go back and watch this and see what's going on uh, in development in our city. And thank all the council members um, for your time and joining us tonight. Uh, so good night, everyone. And thank you for coming. Good night. Good night.